Obviously, we're, we're very optimistic about this year's team, uh, recognize the position we're in, and welcome the challenge. Uh, I've not had a team in my entire career that is this deep. Uh, I think we have to make sure that we're able to rotate personnel in a way that maximizes our effectiveness. But I think we have a, a great level of maturity on this team, and we're really looking forward to it. Thank you, Coach. Let's open up the floor for questions at this time. Let's go back left. Hi, Fran. Scott Docterman, Cedar Rapids Gazette. Uh, could you kind of talk about how Devin Marble has uh, elevated his level of play since last, uh, really la middle part of last season, and what do you expect from him this year in taking another step forward? Well, I think it's critical for our team that he do exactly what you just said, take another step forward. Uh, the thing about him is he will put the time in to make that happen. The incredibly hard worker, uh, and that's how he worked his way out of the slump he was in midway through last season. Uh, he got back in the gym, he came early, got extra shots up, uh, really studied film. Uh, he's a student of the game. And uh, I think at this point, he's feeling really good about himself. He had a great trip overseas. We played six games in August. He has been practicing extremely well, uh, been very consistent, and that's what we need from him this year. Let's go back left again. Hey, Fran, Dick Weiss, how are you? <laughs> Talk to me a, a little bit about your offensive skill level as, as, as shooters. You've obviously been very good defensively. What, do you, what have you done to try to develop uh, perimeter firepower? You, you know what's interesting, Dick? You know, you look at our team last year, and, and, and clearly you look at the defensive numbers, and you see that's why we won 25 games. The offensive numbers would not equate to that number. Uh, we were a little surprised, you know, because we felt like, particularly with, with, with Zach McCabe and Josh Oglesby, doing what they did the previous year, you sort of expect that they'll be somewhere around those same numbers. They were not. I think they'll come back to something close to those numbers. Zach was 41 as a sophomore, Josh 39 as a freshman. Uh, so both of those guys have worked extremely hard. They're in great shape, and now one's a junior, one's a senior. So I think those two in particular will have big years. I think you'll see Gassell and Marble in particular. Mike's a sophomore now. Uh, Marble's numbers went up from his sophomore year, so those guys will be solid. I think the addition of Jared Utoff, Peter Jock, uh, both excellent shooters, I mean, phenomenal shooters, both of them. So when you couple that with, you know, Aaron White's ability to score, Mel Basabi's ability to score, uh, and, and pretty much if you look at the 11 guys we're going to play, all of them can score points. All of them are capable of double-figure games. Uh, and I think you'll see a, a completely different Adam Woodbury and Gabe Olashini in the five spot as scorers. So now it, 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 it takes the defense, defense's ability away from being able to really get up into the guys that they expect to make shots. So I think, I think what you'll see is a much more well-rounded offensive team, and I think we'll shoot the ball just fine. Let's go back left and then front left. Hi, friend. Um, Kevin Click, Daily I went to be. Can you just talk about how um, Gabe Olshaney has progressed since he's gotten into Iowa City and how he can challenge Woodbury for maybe some more minutes than he may have gotten last year? The, the thing about Gabe, obviously when he came here, you know, he didn't have a lot of basketball in his background. But when you're 6'10 with a 7'3 wingspan and, and, and maybe the fastest guy on the team, you know, the only thing that you need to see is a, is a work ethic that is going to be required to reach the potential that he has. And he has one of the greatest work ethics I've ever been around. So what you're seeing is a guy who, as a freshman, he got some minutes, he got his feet wet. As a sophomore, he was instrumental in, in some of our big wins, uh, played a lot more. And I think this year what you're going to see is a much more complete player. Uh, he's an unbelievable offensive rebounder. He runs the floor extremely well and he can finish with either hand uh, he's also developed a, about a about a 12 to 15 foot jump shot that has been very good which really will set up his drive because he's got an unbelievable first step so there's no question that those two guys in particular will have much greater impact on our team and what happens in practice every day is that they really go after each other 
Uh, Gabe Olashini has made Adam Woodbury a lot better and vice versa. Let's go front left. Good morning, Coach Bryant Snow with the Arena Sports Network. How are you? Great. Aside of Devin Marble, who would you be, who will you be leaning on to A, establish your team identity, to help establish your team identity, and B, as a big defensive presence? Well, I think that the, the next guy we would look at would be Aaron White. Obviously, he had a, an, an amazing summer playing for the United States team and then also traveling with us. He's also a junior. He's our second leading returning scorer. You would not have looked at him as a defensive presence as a freshman, more of a steals guy who could rebound. But now you're seeing somebody who's really, really understands the game and can impact the game defensively and offensively. Uh, he truly understands how to win. So I think he would be, he would be the guy. And I think, I think you look at Mike Cassell as well. Uh, incredibly hard worker, can put pressure on the basketball, can guard a one or a two can make shots in traffic, can make shots late. I think those two guys, uh, and then the next one would be Basabi. I mean, I think what we're going to see with him is a guy who's going to have a senior year commensurate with what we thought we saw when he was a freshman. You know, his sophomore year wasn't so good. Last year, substantially better. A completely different level of maturity, uh, physically ready to go, and obviously we've seen the incredible talent that he has. Back left. Coach Adam Amini, ESPN. Over the last four or five years you're, in your career, the wins for your seasons for the teams that you've been from Siena to now continue to rack up 25, 26 wins a season. Where, was there an adjustment for you trying to build off of the, the success at Siena to this past year? Was there something you leaned on from your prior position to what you're doing now at Iowa? And have you seen a change in yourself and maybe a coaching style or a coaching philosophy that's helped you kind of keep success where you've gone the last few years? I think it's more a function of you know, the places where I've gone. When, you know, when we went to Greensboro, when we went to Siena, and then went to Iowa, you know, the programs were struggling at that time. And, you know, the administration was looking to me to sort of solidify what we were doing, build a program. Uh, you know, I've never taken the shortcut approach. You know, we, we've primarily built it with, with incoming freshmen. Uh, we believed in the guys who remained. Uh, you know, I think, you know, so often you hear a guy takes a job and, okay, well, you know, when you get your own guys in there, uh, you know, things will get better. You know, I always looked at it like this. The minute I take that job, Whoever's there, they're my guys. And whoever I bring in, they're my guys. And together, it will build it, you know, step by step. Uh, and we won't, we won't succumb to pressure. You're not moving it quickly enough. You know, I, I look at it like this. There's only one way to do it, and that's the right way. You've got to teach your guys and get them to buy into your philosophy. Obviously, we play fast. So we want guys that are willing to play fast, but we don't play nuts. So you've got to make sure we understand how to do that. Uh, we're going to recruit, we're going to recruit hard, we're going to involve our players in recruiting, so that's the most important thing. And, uh, you know, we're going to recruit true student-athletes that are going to compete uh, and are going to be able to handle the, the pressures that come with competing at this level. And, and, and you know, it's been successful for me so far. Uh, I'm also smart enough to know that you have to surround yourself with really good staff members. So wherever I've been, I've had smart, talented coaches along with me. And uh, when you have character on your team and, and, and intelligent coaches, uh, you can usually win. Time for one last question. Let's go middle right. Uh, Tom Oates, Wisconsin State Journal. Friend, what do you think of the, the new rules, the block charge and the and the uh, defending the player with the ball and what effect do you think it'll have on the game? Well, it, it appears to me that it's going to have a tremendous effect on the game. Uh, uh, it only stands to reason there'll be a lot more fouls called out away from the basket. What I don't want to see is touch fouls away from the basket and guys getting mugged off the ball. 
uh, that won't work. Uh, I've been saying for years we need to clean up those collisions at the rim. Uh, so I, I, I think that is, is brilliant what they're doing there to protect the driver. Uh, and too many, too many guys that were talented enough to go by their man and three guys falling down before the guy even got to the rim. So I think to clean up those, those collisions at the rim is a great thing. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if the, the moves out front and the touch fouls will be sustainable. Uh, I think in theory it may work, you know, in, in practicality it may make the games long and grueling and it may have a, an adverse effect with regard to we're trying to open up the game and teams may have to play more zone because you have to protect your guys who are in foul trouble. So I, I think when it's all said, no, we really don't know what's going to happen. But, but I, I like the thought process. You know, when I'm, I'm an offensive guy, you know, we're going to drive the ball to the basket. So those rules, you know, would in theory help us. So we'll see, we'll see how it ends up. Thank you, Coach.